Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin in another minute. Can we go ahead now? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We're about to embark on the service of Thanksgiving, otherwise called homegoing, for Carl Curtis. In doing so, let me remind us of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said, I am the resurrection and the life and he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he also live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die it was Job of old who said, I know that my redeemer liveth that he should stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we brought nothing into this world, and it is very certain we can take nothing out. It is the Lord who hath given, and he is it who hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. May I invite us to unite your voices in doing the hymn, To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the word that he gave us his son. Should we stand, please? So God be the glory, great thing he has done. So
Thank you very much. Please remain standing. Prior will now be done by Miss Nadine Law. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our God, we truly want to give you thanks for your goodness, your mercy, and your love towards us. Lord, we have come once more to another thanksgiving service for the life of Carl Curtis, otherwise called Tony. Lord, our friends, our families, his children, they are all here. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the life that he had lived. And so, Lord, we pray that we also remember that death is not final. We have to make our calling and election sure. So, Lord, we put everything into your hands at this time. Be with the proceedings. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be felt in this place today. We pray for Christ's sake. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. The second lesson will be coming shortly, so let us just look to the Lord at this time in uh, Worshipping him just for a moment of silence. Praise the Lord. The first lesson comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reading from verse 1 through to verse 12. This will be done by uh, Britannia Tomlinson, who is adopted daughter to the deceased. This will be followed by a musical selection by Mr. Carl, Carl Molly. Get that going. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to pass away. A time to rent and a time to sue, a time to silent, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time, to war, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in the What profit had he that worketh in the world of la he laboured? I have seen the truth which God hath given the soul to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. 
also he had set the world in, the heart, in their hearts, so that no man can find out, find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Last verse and final. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Okay, in the portion of God's holy word, and the Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good. I know we are in a funeral setting, but we don't have to be sad. Amen? Amen. Every life that the Most High has placed on this earth is lived for His glory. Remember, we are all creatures, and everything that God has created, it has created Him for His purpose. And in his time, he allows everything to happen. Amen? Amen? So we give thanks for the life. Amen? I don't know if I'll ever understand it. 
you very, very much. Great singing and a lovely message that is brought forth through the words of that rendition. Praise God. So this time we're going to have the a message being read by um, Sean Curtis, who is nephew to the deceased. And my uncle would never want me to be up here. I cry like this. And I said, You would have said, Shall we? I cry for. sisters them and get in trouble and they used to have a run for some guy some ass mother but the mother said yeah some guy used to tease and they used to have a run from him through the field and she tripped and Tony go back for, for her and she said why you don't why you come back for me he said no nah, I'm not leave my sister you might <laughs> so you're not know, leave my sister and he always used to cook the food But he had a beautiful family and beautiful children over there, Tony and Brittany. Love talk about them, you see, and we hear from them from Gramps all the time. May I give you a joke? Um, Gramps don't want me to tell this a story, but may I give you a joke? One night, when Tony was staying in the house, every day, Gramps used to cook the food. I had a dumpling, you know, you know. <laughs> and Gramps would cook the food every night, every morning. They said, Sean, what happened to the pot? Why the pot so empty? He said, Gramps, I don't know. He said, all right, don't lie to me. He said, I don't know, Gramps, but God, no, me don't know, me don't know. He said, all right, next night, same thing. He said, Sean, what happened to the food? He said, Gramps, I don't know. He said, all right. I know say young uncle, you know. Me know say young uncle. I said, Gramps, I don't know. Me I in, in a better sleep. So all right. So this one I'm gonna do for time. Tony said, sleep in the basement. So she locked the door one night. She locked the basement door. And then Tony tell me, said, um, Sean, mommy, I lock the door. I said, yes. It's all right. You know what to do. I said, Tony, me can't let you up. I said, Sean, Sean, just cool, am I cool? It's all right. So I said, man, I have to wait till when Graham's gone to sleep. He said, yeah, 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 just wait till Graham's gone to sleep. I said, all right. So I'm going to take time to peep in Graham's room when Graham's gone to bed. And I open up the door and let him in. And I let him up. And then me and him in the kitchen, I cook the food and we eat the food. 
All me here. Who in the kitchen? Me and Tony look at each other. He said, Sean, that's nothing, that's nothing. He said, blood tree, we can't. I said, you want to me can't, you. Sean, you in the kitchen? I hope you're in the kitchen with Tony. I said, no, Gramps, all right. All right, me and Tony. I said, yes, Gramps. And she said, Sean, let me tell you about lying. I said, but Gramps, it's Tony. He said, man, it's all right. I mean, I said, you love your uncle. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's not very easy when you have a loved one who you have been close to. Four years and ten, 
and if by reason of strength they are they be four four years yet in their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away who knoweth the power of thine arms even according to thy fear so is thy wrath 12 and last so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom Thank you very much. It's just a number of days that you need to apply your heart onto wisdom. We're going to have at this time a musical selection that will be done by Britannia and my friend. I get that wrong, wrong, sorry. Done by Tonya. Oh, that's it. That's that's a message. A message. Mm -hmm. That's a message. Mm -hmm. Tonya and Britannia do this message. Uh, another message by Corey. I'll do that. No. 
Good afternoon again, everyone. This message is from me and my sister. They state, they state there is a reason time will heal. Neither time or They say there is a reason time will heal. Neither time or reason will change the way I feel. Gone are the days we used to share, but in my heart, you will always, you will always be there. The gates of memories will never close. I miss you more than anybody knows. Sometimes I sit and wonder when I think of you and if you really knew. God gave us a handsome father. I remember days we used to. I remember days we used to come. We used to come by, and you would say, "Britannia, Tolan, me no work no money from morning." We and we would say, "Daddy, we didn't come for money. We just came to see how we were doing." And you would run your little jokes, asking questions like, "Who no know no boyfriend yet?" with a low tone. One thing I could always say, one thing I could say about our father is that 
that although he didn't have the money to send us to school, he would always call mommy to check up on us, see how we were doing in school, and to remind us. And to remind us, Virginia Antonia, education is a must. I stand tall on that. You see how, you see how I'm tall? That's how tall I stand on your education. You were always there with a helping hand. We miss you now. Our hearts are sore at times. At times goes by. I miss I miss seeing your happy face, Daddy, as I would call out with my loud voice. Daddy, just saying this, no one can take your place in my heart. Days are going to come and I will remember things you told me. You told me on July 20, 23rd. You're here for a reason, Tonian, and remember that. Make me and your mother proud. I cannot give you everything but trust, but try my best as you told me. The days that day, missing you already, Missing you already. Love you guys, not just me and Brit, but Nana. Now it's time to say this once again. Love you, Daddy. Fly high. I am glad I did not wait too late to let you know. I love you. Rest well until we meet again on the glorious days. Pleasant afternoon to everyone. Cousins are family we choose for ourselves. They are like safety nets, always there to catch you when you need them. Cousins are the ones who understand your crazy family because they are a part of it too. They are confidants who keep our secrets and share our dreams. Cousins may not always be there with you, but they are always there for you. They are the ones who love you despite your quirks and idiosyncrasies. Cousins are the proof that, you lo that love can be both unconditional and unbreakable. They are the ones that inspire us to be ourselves and embrace our uniqueness. 
Cousins are the ones who remind us that we are never alone in this journey called life. They are a living example of what family, love, and friendship truly mean. I definitely can say that I had a great friendship with Tony. He was one who always called and checked up on me and inquired about my siblings if he didn't get them when he tried to contact them. He was a very kind person and once he had it, he would give. I remember seeing Tony several times while walking in Mandeville and he would say, how you stay with phone card cause you need some credit, you need anything to eat. If I said no, Tony, I'm good. He would try to just hand me cash. And if I refused and said, Tony, keep it for a rainy day, he would get very upset and took offense. Tony was very protective of those he loved. I had to try and keep a happy face when going around Tony because he would always say, who trouble your cause? Just let me know him. And I know he was very serious when he said that. If Tony saw me with someone he didn't know, he would pull me aside and question me about the person and somehow manage to throw in a warning directly to them, making them aware of how he loves his family and won't let any harm come to them. Rick remembers several instances where Tony rushed several persons for him, even without him asking. He said it's like he would just appear out of nowhere. Regardless of whatever Tony was going through, he always had a smile with him. Even if he expressed his needs, the needs that he had. I'm going to miss you, Tony, but it's your time to rest. Sleep on, my cuz. well-known song, so you can sing along if you know it. Does Jesus tears when my heart is pained to Oh, yes, he 
church. The time you're going to have with Sean and Christy. Christy. Those who touch our lives stay in our hearts forever. It was a beautiful autumn day on September 13, 1966, when Linda Hyman and Winston Curtis welcomed Linda's last child and only son to the world. He was, it was a joyous occasion for the union, and having their third child, they named him Carl Winston Curtis. The family spent the the formative years in Kingston, Jamaica, where the family resided at the time. While there, he attended the Winward Road Primary School. Shortly after, on September 1st, 1976, he migrated to the United States. Life opportunities took the family to New York, where he continued his formative education at Stevenson High School, where he enjoyed sports. If you know Tony, he was very tall and I'm sure he did fairly well at basketball while attending high school. And later he attended the city college where he furthered his education in teaching. Tony was like any youthful boy you can think of. He and was up to his fair share of antics. One thing I know, he is that well, one thing I know that he was always a joyful and fun-loving person. He engaged in a numerous number, sorry, number of joy uh, occupation to include being a music teacher and basketball teacher, also a drummer. He was a wicked drummer. No one could beat him on the drums. I truly know. Tony touched the lives of many children, he thought. He didn't stop there. Tony went on to further himself as becoming a chef. Tony loved the kitchen more than his other two siblings to the point where Aunt Linda has to be constantly telling him, boy, stop not about the food in the kitchen. Tony knew the streets of New York. Well, he had many friends and enjoyed life. He is remembered as having prepared some very delicious dishes as he is cooked up a storm at a restaurant in Manhattan. As with many Jamaican family, where church was a must, Aunt Linda saw to it that Tony attended church in his, in his early life. Like other typical Jamaican families where children choose their own life, Tony went on into other areas. Also, life happens. Tony met a beautiful young lady where they fell in love, and they had their first child, a son, Corey Curtis. They enjoyed father and son relationship in the early years. Life decisions made, to made by Tony, he decided to come back to Jamaica around 26 years ago. On his return, he initially was killing, was living with his cousin Pam and her family, the Newmans. Tony was the popular guy in Medsfield, referred to by many as Trousers' cousin. He was very frequent in Medsfield, where he quickly developed a relationship with a young lady by the name Davia. They quickly welcomed Tony's second son, Carl Curtis, aka CJ. Their relationship shortly ended. Tony and I met while I was in high school. Uh, you know, say, our she, we are talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> we were close friends as he opted, wanted, often wanted to carry my book bag. For me, he was a gentle man. A few years later, we would develop a relationship. You know what, let me make sure we this. A few later, years later, we developed a relationship. He became the adopted dad to my first child, Britannia, and he took care of her as if he, she was his own. Soon we moved in together, and shortly after, we welcomed his only daughter and last child, Tonya. Life was stable with us for a while, but if you know Tony, Tony was a handful. We parted ways but stayed in touch. He got a job shortly after at a restaurant in Manhattan. Boy, may I tell you, 
Tony loved cooking. He also did some painting and a little hand, handyman work here and there. On numerous occasions, he could call me to, to, tell, to let me know of his whereabouts. At one point, he was living with his cousins in St. Elizabeth, where life took a turn for him. He then became ill, where he was admitted to the Mandeville Regional Hospital for treatment. While he was there, on numerous visits, he would talk about his love for his mother and two sisters, Rosalie and Angela. Miss Paulette and myself made various visits back and forth. <sighs> he then succumbed to his illness on March 16, 2024. God's grace and mercy will find those who continue to help those in need. Tony is sadly missed by his mother, Linda, two sisters, Angela and Rosie, other siblings. His four children, Corey, Carl, Tony, and his adopted daughter, Britannia, and his grandson, Zakai. Um, his nephew, Sean and Armand. His grand nephew, DeAndre. Cousins and other relatives and friends. We're going to take this opportunity to thank each and every one that came here today. Um, Tony was well loved by everybody. Tony was well loved by everybody. And if you know Tony, he was a kind person. One thing with him, he now have it and keep it to himself. He never had it to give his children the way he wanted to, but trust me, he would call on various occasions. Christine, what one with Tony and how Brittany are doing at school? And I would have to give him an update. But as we are here today to lay him to rest, I would like to thank each and everybody from the Nat Patrick City Mission Church, my co-workers from the Northern Caribbean University Press, other relatives and friends. We give you thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me thank everyone who have done their uh, bit so far. Giving thanks to the Almighty God for His grace, for His mercy that He has uh, afforded us today. Uh, the scripture, uh, one of the scriptures that we read said um, to everything, there is a season and there is a time. And uh, probably that's fitting in different ways because I guess our time is also slipping away from us here. So I just say a couple of words after which we'll have the um, we will have the recessional. Uh, of course, just before that, the prayer for the family, and that prayer will be done by E. Vassal. But speaking about time, uh, it is interesting that so many things fall into the explanation of time because life is something that there's a time to the scripture says to everything there is a time and it made very made it very clear that there's a time to be born and that there is a time to die and there are times for different um, activities and uh, different programming along the way. So during this time which each person has been given, there are moments during that time that different things 
occur. And our beloved have been given a time. That time has come to its close. We are at this time engaged in a service of thanksgiving for the life that is given to him by the Almighty. This begins in a special way now that he is gone, but in the order in which we are carrying it out here, which is that of a service, it will only last also for a time, and not for a long time. There are times to embrace and a time to, re uh, to uh, refrain from embracing, time to get and time to lose. Uh, it is said time to love and time to hate. Take a little time to explain that. But what is the profit that we have in our labor here and earth? The scripture says in verse 10, I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. And so when we look on life, we have a limited time to do what we ought to do, to be involved in what we ought to be involved in. A matter of fact, uh, one scripture tells us that the years uh, of our, our sojourn here on earth is 70 years, but by reason of strength, they might be four or even more. But even then, they will be labor and there will be sorrow. The fact is that there's a time for each one of us to be on this planet in the form in which we presently are. And it is a time that is given to us to make it right with the Almighty God. It's a time which is given to us to prepare ourselves for uh, a better future as we prepare ourselves for eternity. And as we think about even setting time for this service and whatever else we have put in our timing, we ought to be conscious of the fact that we have a limited time to be engaged in all of this. And so the time is coming speedily when our sojourn will be finished. And after our eyes are closed in death, we cannot make any changes, any plans. So it behooves each one of us to seek the Lord while he may be found and to call upon him while the time is available to recognize that we are not just here as stones or as trees or whatever, but we are here for a purpose. God has given us this opportunity to live for him, to serve him, to glorify him, to draw close to him, and the time that we have given to do all of this is coming very quickly to a close. To each one of us, there's a time. Some have been given more time than others, but the fact is that there is a limited time. And since there is a limited time to engage in all that we um, seek to engage in, in this life, we should prioritize 
and seek to make sure that we spend our valuable time to serve the Lord because we are given this opportunity and this opportunity might soon be taken away from us. So let us seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Let us forsake any ways that are evil and turn to God who is merciful and will have mercy upon us. To the God who pardons and pardons abundantly. And so let us seek the Lord with all our hearts, trusting in Him, giving ourselves to Him, recognizing that the opportunity we have is only for a little time. And this life will soon be over. So again, brothers and sisters and friends, let us think seriously about that which I consider paramount at this time, to make sure our relationship with God is all right, and that we're looking forward for better days, as the song would really say, better days are coming by and by. But let us also recognize that it's a choice whether we want to live a life that pleases God and be rewarded beautifully or whether we want to ignore the Lord and as such lose the opportunity to serve him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Jesus came, he died that we could be forgiven, that we can be ransomed, that we can be saved, that we can have a future which is beautiful with him. And so let us seek the Lord with all our hearts, call upon him even while he is near, and let the wicked forsake his way, his righteous man is thought, and let us look forward for the day, a great day is coming, when the saints and the sinners will be parted right and left. Are we ready for that day? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to face the consequences of our lifestyle? The important thing is that even now, we have an opportunity to change that which may not be going in the right direction. And so the prayer of my heart is that as family members, as relatives, as friends, there will be a close relationship. Now we may lend a shoulder to each other to lean on and to be mindful of each other that we, but that we will think of the entire world all persons who we meet to witness to them to make sure they too find the rest that uh, the saints of God are longing for. So beloved friends, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own way of thinking. In all your ways, put Christ first. And if we do that, he will direct our path. May he bless us. May he cover us. May he be close to us. But kindly remember that it's a choice that we all have given the opportunity to make. Make the right choice. One song says you better get right with God. Come and do it now. And so, do not delay, because time is brief. Life is frail, fragile. And so, in the light of all that, seek the Lord and seek Him now. Praise God. 
And this time, brothers and sisters, friends, let us uh, bow before the Lord as we have this prayer being made for the family and this prayer will be done by E. Vassal. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to pray a prayer for the family. I would like everybody else to stand. And uh, the family remain seated so you can know who they are. Family remain seated and everybody else who is not a family member, stand please. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal Father, creator of mankind, master of the universe, Father, we come before you this afternoon, God. We are with misfeeling, Heavenly Father, because you have taken from us a loved one. What well, God has pleased you, you give life and you take it away. We thank you for the life that you have given unto Tony, God. Whatever he has done with it, God, is, is his prerogative. But Father, we pray at this moment for the for those who are alive and well. We know that there is no repentance in the grave. And we are cognizant of the fact that there is life after death. So Father, we pray for those who are here and alive now, that they may be calling an election sure. Father, we pray for the bereaved family, God, that you may overshadow them, Heavenly Father. Build the fence around them. Father, they are in mourning at this time, God, we ask you, God, that you may comfort them. We pray especially for the children, Heavenly Father, that are without a father right now. I pray, dear God, that they, they may take comfort in you that you are the Heavenly Father and they need to make right with you so that you can comfort their heart. Father, send your holy angel to encamp around the family and give them words of comfort at this moment. No one can get accustomed to death. Death is a cruel enemy. It comes to steal us, steal a loved one from us. But God, you say, God, if we call upon you, you're able, God, to keep us. You're able, the Heavenly Father, to bind us together. Help us, dear God, that we may trust you before this world pass in eternity. So that when we pass, God, we can inherit that life after death. We thank you for each and every one that is here this afternoon. We pray for those who, God, are mourning. You may comfort them again. Bless us now as we say thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank everyone who played your part in this service, who have done it in a tangible way. Thank God for you all, and thank you all who have come to support the family on this special occasion. Thank the family for being here. Thank God for allowing them to hold up during this service. The recessional hymn will be to Canaan's land. I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never died. We'll sing the first two stanzas in the refrain. And at the end of the refrain of the second stanza, we'll be exiting the chapel, and that will take us to the, the graveside.
Thank you very much. What we are, go what we are going to do is that since the persons who came a bit late, late in terms of the time we started, and wanted to, to see the, the body before it be buried, we're going to, during the singing of this hymn, uh, allow such persons quickly to come and to get that last look. We will be seated until we see that that little bit dies down, then we stand. So, to Canaan's land, I'm on my way.
Just follow me, just go straight. Just straight, yes, sir. Now, lead her on. here. Hold on, Billy. I'll come for me to put on this here. Please. Side. Side. 
Almighty God, wise providence, to take from us. remains dust to dust earth to earth and ashes to ashes looking forward for the glorious return of our Lord and Savior Jesus at his appearing blessed is the one who died in the Lord from henceforth, said the spirit, they rest from their labor. The tradesmen are going to work on sealing the tomb. While we do this, we're going to be singing. And of course, the song is there. That we'll be doing as the graveside song when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the silver fern shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called up and I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called And the world 
to do some choruses, first one being close than a brother. Closer than a brother, my Jesus is to me, is my dear. Bye, the